Hello everyone, Doug Bassett here, and today I'm going to give you some tips on how to troubleshoot locating your mail servers. Let's say, for example, that eh, maybe you had a little bit of a falling out with your internet service provider, and this internet service provider has said, fine, you know, go ahead and do your thing, just do it somewhere else. So now you have different IP addresses, and you want to verify that your new ISP hosts all your records. But realize, how in the world do mail servers figure out where my mail server happens to be? Well, let's say that I'm doug.bassett at whitehouse.gov. You would do a DNS query. And the way that the DNS query is going to operate is that you will send a request to your DNS server. The DNS server will then go to the root server and say, hey, where's the .gov server? It'll send the request to the .gov server. The .gov server then says, okay, well, here's the IP address for whitehouse.gov and then you are finally able to get the IP address for that particular system. So the way that we're going to do it though is we're going to use a command line and the utility that we're going to use is NSLOOKUP. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing off, NSLOOKUP. And the first thing that you're going to see with NSLOOKUP in a lot of cases is you're going to get an error message right here and that's because it's doing a reverse lookup trying to match the name and IP address of your DNS server to the DNS records. That helps prevent man in the middle. So unless you have a reverse lookup set up for your DNS server, just ignore that error message. It's not that big a deal. Now if you need to change which DNS server you're going to be talking to, it's pretty simple. Just simply type server. And in this case, we're going to go to Google server, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 and you'll notice that uh, this particular Google server does have a reverse lookup so that you know that this is actually the server that you're trying to gain access to. Now, when we're looking for DNS, let's say that you're trying to email me, and of course my email address is doug.bassett at stormwind.com. Doug.bassett is not the name of a server. It's my name. It's my email address. So we have to figure out what server is responsible for handling email for stormwind.com. And again, NS lookup to the record or to the rescue, particularly a type of record known as an MX record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say set type to equal MX. And what that means is it is a mail exchanger. It's a record that is used to identify email servers. And then I'm just going to simply type stormwind.com. Now you'll notice that one of the first things that happens here is it says that this is a non-authoritative response, a non-authoritative answer. That just simply means that the Google server is not the server that owns the stormwind.com domain. It doesn't mean that it's inaccurate. It's just saying, hey, you know, I don't own these records. Another server told me that this is the correct answer, so I'm providing it to you, which is typically what's going to happen unless you're doing DNS queries for resources that are inside your environment. And you'll notice that it says all throughout here, hey, it's stormwind.com. You'll notice that they also identify themselves as MX records. Then we have this thing called a preference number. Here's our little preference number. We have the first one is 10 and the other four is listed as a preference of 30. Well, a preference number is like a golf score. And unfortunately for me, it's low man wins. So the lower the score that you get, the fewer balls that you hit in, you're gonna win. Same thing here. When we're dealing with preference numbers on MX records, the record that has the lowest score is going to get all of the mail. Now here we only have one that has a preference of 10, so that server is going to get 100% of the mail. But the whole purpose behind dealing with these preference numbers is, you know, in case something happens. I mean, think about it. Your company's email server fails or your internet service provider's email server fails. Do you want all of your email to stop? Of course not. So by going through and having multiple preference numbers, it says, hey, we're going to try and send all of our traffic to this SMTP 15 because it has the lowest preference number. But if you cannot contact that server, then you can pick any of these other four because they all have the same value. It's just going to sit there and round robin load balance between them. So let's go ahead and test this out, see if this uh, IP address is correct or if we're still on our old internet service provider. I've installed the Telnet client on this machine and it's under a feature on Windows Server 2008 R2, so I'll say Telnet. And we're going to Telnet to S, oh actually we're going to say open, I've already said Telnet. We're going to uh, open smtp15.8.8.8 
M-S-O-U-T-L-O-K online.net. Now, Telnet is typically going to be port 23. You use a lot of times when you're talking to switches or when you're talking to routers, but it's not SMTP or in our case, ESMTP. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to change the port number that we're going to use from the normal port 23 to port 25. So we'll go in here and we'll just add 25. And what will happen is, is that we immediately get a response back that says, hey, we have a 220, which means it is a good response. Here is the name of the server, and it says ESMTP, and here's our version number and all that. What this has illustrated is, in fact, our Telnet connection to port 25 of the email server has successfully operated. So again, the idea here is to be able to troubleshoot. The first thing that you want to do is you want to verify the email address by doing an NS lookup. You could also ping it, but you have to find out what the name of the server is. By going through and doing the MX look, M, uh, the uh, NS lookup with the MX record, it showed all of the addresses of all of the servers that are responsible for handling our email. Then we open up a Telnet session. Don't forget the port 25. Otherwise, you'll be trying to connect to port 23, and then it's not going to work. So the whole idea here, folks, is to be able to verify DNS connectivity. By using NS lookup, especially not using our particular server, we went through and looked at the public face of our DNS. Hey, do we have the record? Is everything uh, being able to be located? And then to do the final testing, we actually tell that into the port and checked it out. So, you know, it's good to trust your internet service provider. But, uh, you know, it's okay to trust, but we like to verify. And by using Telnet and NS Lookup, we can do exactly that.